Hey, what's up, SAS Masters? My name is George, and today I'm going to show you the basics of Final Cut Pro in a flash. So maybe you just want to throw in a video, chop in the beginning, chop the end, add a transition, add some titles, and just know how to get around in Final Cut Pro. So you're going to learn all of that in this video right now. All right, this is my Final Cut Pro dashboard, and I'm going to show you around like I said. So the first thing that I recommend that you do is head on over to File, create a brand new library, because when you get started, you want to create a library. That's a folder. After that, you create projects. So if I create a brand new project, you got the basic settings. For example, title. Next thing you want to look out for is the video format. So for example, I'm recording at 4K, so I have it set to 4K. But if you're recording 1080p, 720p, or maybe, maybe in 8K, well, set it there. Next thing you want to set is the frame rate. Usually, everyone's recording at 30p, but if you're like in the movie mode, 24p, and if you got a higher bit rate, then 60p is fine. Once you create that, hit OK. And it starts off with a brand new project. Drag in your files inside of the timeline right here. That's the easiest way to do it. But let me open one of the ones that I have already. So let's open this project because I want to show you from here. Okay. So how do I get around Final Cut Pro? Well, on the left, like I said before, we got the library. Then we got the projects inside of that library. So I can go into another project if I need to. In the center, we have obviously the preview. So if I click play, today I'm going to show you how. Oh, <laughs> then you see the preview right there. Now you could change the size of that preview right here if you want it to fit in that square, or maybe you want to make it smaller or just fit again, right? And you can drag and drop all of these to make it as you're liking, right? Maybe you have a smaller screen or a bigger one, you want to change those up. On the right, we have the media settings and the effects go in here. So for example, I have a keyer effect. That's for example, for the green screen. If I remove it, we got our green screen back. And if I take it on, it's back on. I can show what I've done in those effects right here, my settings. Next, we have the color settings. So if you want to set, for example, color, saturation, exposure, just to edit that a bit. You got the audio settings. Again, audio is right here. You can lower the volume, make it higher, add some effects to that um, area of the audio, set it there. Let's go back into that one right there. On the bottom, obviously, we have the timeline. So you can see the timeline right here. Where are the, the time? For example, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. You can zoom in with your mouse. For example, I zoom inside of here, zoom back down. If I need to fit that right there, I would click Shift Z and it fits the whole timeline there. So it doesn't matter how long it is, it's going to fit it there. And I can zoom again if I want. Next thing we have on the bottom is, for example, is the index right here. You can view all the, the clips that are in there. Click again on index just to get rid of it, especially for small screens. Next is we have the tools. This is really important that you get to know it. But if you forget, here are the tools. Now on the tools, you're going to see this letters right here. If I click on that letter, it's going to choose that tool. So for example, A would be select. That's going to be the most one that you're going to use. So A is to drag and drop, click on some things. And the next one you're going to use the most is the blade. So the blade is by B. So for example, if I click on B, it turns into blade. So if I click there, I chop that video. If I click A, it turns back into the selector. Now, a really cool shortcut is if you hold B. So for example, I'll hold B. I can chop video wherever I want it. And when I'm done, I let go of B and I'm back to my selector. So that's a really cool shortcut that's going to save you a lot of time. So once you do that, you can select the clip and you can click delete and it's gone. That's really helpful because when you want to get started in the video, obviously, you don't start when you click record. I mean, you're getting ready, you click record, and then you chop that part at the beginning to get started. And at the end, you go click on the rec button for recording, and you want to chop that off also. So select those pieces and delete them. Next thing that you want to look out for is here on the right. We got two really important ones, which is the transitions that's enabled right now. These are the transitions that are available. If I hover over them, you see what they're going to do. So in this case, it's a cross fade. Now, what's really cool about Final Cut Pro is that it comes with a bunch of transitions, a bunch of effects, and you can also buy more and just put them inside here so you can have a bigger library. Next thing you have is the effects. So you got effects and the transitions, effects and transitions. Inside of the effects, you got video effects. And if I go down here, I have the audio effects. See how that changed to audio right here? But it's inside of the effects. So if I drag it in here, I'm going to be able to see it here in the top. Let me show you how that works. Let me drag in this one right here. So Alexa Blur, I'm going to drag it inside of this clip. Let me put my mice, mouse pointer right here. And actually, I'm going to drag it in the bottom clip, not on this one. All right. So that dragged it in right here. And you can see that effect is added right there. 
and I can view the effect settings here on the top right. Now if this was an audio setting, I would see it over here, but it's not, it's a video effect. And if I add an audio effect, go over here, let's just say I'm going to add this channel EQ. So I add it there, go into my audio settings, go down here, and here's my channel EQ. So that's what I just added right now. And if I click on this yellow box, I get rid of it by clicking delete. Effect is gone. Same thing goes with the media effect. So if I don't want it, I click on it and boom. It's really cool because it's really easy to use. Um, Adobe Premiere is way more complex and you got to do some 3D, thing, 3D things out there. So next thing you would want to do is add some titles, right? Let's go into our titles over here. Click there. And we got some titles. Now, I got some really fancy titles because I purchased them. See, like these are more fancy ones. And they're really cool. Well, you can buy those. And I'll leave a link in the description just in case you guys are interested in those. But normal ones would be like this one that come with it. Basics. So, for example, this is like a 3D one. And all I have to do is drag it. Put it on top. So, for example, I'll add it right there. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to hit spacebar instead of clicking play right here because it saves me time. And that's what you should do also. So I'll hit spacebar and you're going to see that 3D title right now. So spacebar and there it is. And there we go. Now if I want to stretch it, I'll just drag it right here. See that there? It drags the setting. Again, that's also, that also works for videos. So if it drags it, I can do that also. So it's really cool that you have all that flexibility. Again, super easy to add titles, 3D titles. And that's way more complex on Adobe Premiere. Now let's just say, you know what? I like George, all right? So I cut the beginning, I cut the end, I added, oh, gotta add a transition for a second. I wanna show you that how that works. Let me show you this transition right here. I'm gonna click play. That's a bad transition to show you. Um, let me drag this clip down here, get rid of that by delete. Or you can also hit V if you just wanna hide it, okay? So there's no transitions in between these two clips, all right? There's nothing there. So let's go into transition settings. Let's add a dissolve just to show you that and then click play so now that we're finished, we are ready. and boom, it dissolved. So it dissolved from this one to me. Let me get rid of the green screen just to show you a bit of more clear. So remove that for now, click play so now that we're finished, we and it jumped. There's a lot of transitions that you can use. Just hover over them and use them. So, okay, now you cut the beginning, cut the end, add a transition, added some titles, you like how it's how it's done, all right? So now what do I do? How do I get this video outside of Final Cut Pro and just get it ready for upload? Okay, head on over to File, head on over to Share, and you got some sharing options right here. Some are by default and some you can add. So for example, let's just say I'm gonna do up to 4K, I'll click on it. But if I add a new destination, so for example, uh, the, the, that one there, I could say, you know what, I need a 720p one, I can add it by right here, adding a destination, select what you want. So this video is going to be for YouTube, you can add it there. But if you're ready, you're going to go to File, Share, I'm going to say this is for 4K, I'm ready to go, I'm going to click Continue. And right here I set the title, so in this case it's called Job Form Feedback, I can set the description and creator, this is just little things that are saved in the file. And it's telling me what the size of this video is going to be. So 2.31 gigabytes. If I'm ready, I click next. And then I set the title right here, which is the same one I, I have, but you can change it. Select the destination, save, and it's going to start rendering. So that rendering, you're going to be able to see it right here. There's a little wheel right there that renders. And you can see the percentage right there. I'm going to click on X because I don't want to render this. But that's where you would see it render. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, that's how fast it's going to render. For this video, it'll probably take like 15 minutes, so like twice what the video size is. And I'm, re I'm recording at 4K and rendering in 4K, just so you get an idea. So basically, that is how you get around Final Cut Pro. Now, Final Cut Pro is a super great option because it's actually super cheap to buy. Now, if you're in a Mac or Hackintosh, you can go, for example, Final Cut Pro. If you buy it, it's $300 and that's all you got to pay. It has all the updates included and everything that's coming. So that's pretty cool that you have that for one single price. Now, I am going to give you a really awesome tip. If you are a teacher or have a school or if you're a student, you can buy the Pro Apps Bundle. So for $200, you get all of this. You get Final Cut Pro. You get Logic X, you get, uh, what's that one called? Motion, compressor, main stage, 
all of those. Main stage is for the audio editing. So it's pretty cool that for that bundle, you get everything instead of just paying for Final Cut Pro $300. So if you're in that niche of education, then you can buy that bundle and get it really, really cheap. So it's a super great option to have Final Cut Pro. Um, I recommend it over uh, Adobe Premiere because Adobe Premiere, even though I do have it and I use it, it's obviously you got to pay month to month or yearly. You don't, It's not a one-time payment. Plus, it gets more complex to edit. So for example, I can do some editing, but if I wanted to do anything, anything 3D with titles, for example, I have to go, it's a bit more complex, Adobe After Effects and get everything ready over there and then bring it into Adobe Premiere and it just gets more complex. Here it's like an all-in-one, really professional editing tool that's super easy to use. Plus, it's super compatible with your Mac, so it's better to render with this than it would be for Adobe Premiere. Well, guys, I hope this video helped you out to get started super, super quick with Final Cut Pro. So don't get scared of it and get started right away. Thank you for watching. My name is George. This is SASMaster, and I'll see you guys later.